fighthype.com here with the IBS super middleweight champion of the world, Caleb Plant. Caleb, uh, before I get into your career, brother, what'd you think of Robert Easter and Francis Barthelemy tonight? It was a good fight, you know, a lot of back and forth action, but I just felt like both of them kind of held back a little bit, you know what I'm saying? I don't feel like either one of them really did enough to, to get the dub. They, they both had good moments, some of them had a couple of great moments, but just, just not enough for either one to really tie the knot. You know, like like them, you you yourself, you know, you're patient and smart in there. But how do you make sure uh, uh, not to be too patient, kind of like they were tonight? You know? I mean, to me, it's life or death in there. So, um, you know, getting a draw, getting a loss, to me, that's not an option. So, I just try, as you've seen in my last fight, when it's time to put it all on the line, you got to put it all on the line. You know, you can't hold back. You got to express yourself freely. And... Um, I feel like holding back, that's not expressing yourself freely mm. and for me, you know, and if there's one place that I love to express myself or the best place that I'm able to express myself, it's the ring. So I, I feel like I'm going to give it all in that. Did you agree with the decision tonight or did you think? I think it was, uh, I think it was pretty just, you know, they see different fights than me and then you also got three different judges seeing three different sides of the fight or four. Uh, so, you know, it's hard to say being a judge is a tough job, but just being a spectator, being a fan, kind of watching and looking off and then watching some more and looking off, it seemed to be somewhat just, you know. And, uh, you know, I saw saw your tweet today. Uh, I'm not friends with any of you at 168. Don't come up to me. And... Yeah, it's just, <laughs> I, I feel like in this generation of boxing, everybody in the same weight division, you know, they want to sit next to each other in fights and they want to take pictures and they want to be friends and napping up and I don't give a fuck about it. I don't, I'm not trying to be friends with nobody. Not, nobody in my weight class. Don't smile at me. Don't look at me. Don't talk to me. I don't... That's not my style. Don't do that. You didn't see Marvin Hagler doing that. You didn't see Sugar Ray Leonard doing that. You see Roberto Duran doing that. Don't talk to me, man. I'm not cool with you. This is, this is war to me. This is life or death. I'll take my last breath in that ring. You always get me with that, man. I'm just I swear to God. I know you would. I know. I know. Before, and you're going to hear this in my press conference. But before a warrior goes to war, he must dig two graves. And most of these boxers just dig one. They, they dig their enemy's grave, but they don't dig their own. And you gotta be, that's how, that's how freely you gotta be willing to express yourself. That when things get hot, I'm not running, I'm not ducking, I'm not hiding, I'm not going nowhere. I'm sitting right here. If, that, if that's what that means, that's what that means. Well, it's, it's interesting though, because usually that temperament, you know, I'll die in the ring, goes hand in hand with a face first kind of fighter, not, not a good boxer, you know? So it's interesting, you know, that you I mean, guys, that's kind of the best of both worlds, maybe, you know? seems to be thus far so <laughs> until you know I guess the marathon continues as Nip would say <laughs> but thus far it seems to be working out so well I, I was gonna ask you about you know your next fight but you did bring up uh, Nipsey Hustle seemed like personally he, he touched he, he touched you quite a bit inspired you yeah, yeah definitely definitely inspiring oh uh, I know you went down to Crenshaw even yeah, to the store and, probably about like the past 10 or 11 years you know um, a lot of people were paying homage to him, and that's great, but I feel like some people are just kind of riding the wave. This, i kind of been on this wave before it was even a wave. So um, the past 10, 11 years, it's been a big part of my life musically, just studying his interviews and his moves and his music and um, trying to apply some of that to my boxing, just soaking, in, soaking up knowledge. And um, yeah, I think it, it hurt me for sure, but I think it hurt a lot of people. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to go pay homage, support what they got going on, and uh, yeah. Did they show you a lot of love down there when you went? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all of them there showed a lot of love. I was there for the champion talk for the, me, Deontay, Sean Porter, Mikey Garcia, Leo Santa Cruz. And so I had my belt with me. And once word got around, they wanted to, be the, you know, bust the belt out, get some picks. And um, yeah, it was a lot of love. Nothing but hospitality. So shout out to, you know, 60s Block. Better known as Nipsey Hustle Square. From here on out. Man, uh, dope stuff, by the way. That's pretty cool that you were able to go down there and get the love back and Iconic. everything. Iconic. Definitely. And um, uh, uh, just lastly, I'm, I'm hearing, uh, you know, the rumors that you'll be back in July, maybe maybe even early August. And, yeah. and in New York, I'm hearing Madison Square Garden. Is, is that what you... Uh, possibly. You know, none set in stone yet. We are looking at those dates, end of July, maybe beginning of August, somewhere in there. Nothing for sure yet. But, um... You know, until then, we're just going to keep trying to get it worked out. Once we are, I'm able to let everybody know. We're going to release it. We're going to make some noise. And then um, from here on out, it'll be in still until we get a unification belt. Because it's one fight at a, at a time, but do you think unification is after this next fight? I mean, all I can do is all I can do. 
So everyone knows I'm not scared to fight nobody. I've said this a hundred times. I say it again. I'm coming off a year layoff, no tuna fight, broke hand, hand surgery to fight the boogeyman. Who, who would think I'd be scared to fight anybody at this point? So. At this point, it's on everyone else to get their job done. I'm taking care of my shit. I'm handling my shit. But it takes two to tango. You know, this ain't a one-man dance.